What up, everybody, and welcome back to yet another episode of Funboxing with Will. I am your host, Will, with H2O Co. Film and Photo, and uh, today we're going to be doing a little review on what I would consider uh, the best and most budget-friendly 50mm portrait lens for low-light photography that I've ever personally found. So uh, let's get into that review today. We're back. So uh, today, like I said, we're going to be getting into a review of a very good, very budget-friendly 50 millimeter lens for low light. Uh, before we do, I just want to thank all of my subscribers. I noticed I've gotten a couple new subscribers this week, and just pretty much anybody who's clicked on these videos of mine and given them a go. I really appreciate your time. Uh, I hope that these unboxings and reviews and tutorials that I've been putting out have been doing good by you guys and that they've been helpful. If you find any of this information uh, at all useful or you like these videos and want to see more, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button down below and then hit the bell notification for notifications of when I put out new content. Uh, I try to get new content out every week. Lately it's been around every two weeks that I put out a new episode and it's basically just because my wife Life is about a month and a half from being due with our new son so I've been things have been hectic around here we've been trying to get the house ready for a new baby and uh, just been really busy lately especially with work and all doing some gigs here and there so uh, but today uh, I digress I wanted to talk about this lens now um, I wanted to talk about the name brand of the lens itself but I can't really find anything on that other than in the description on Amazon, it said 070 was the name brand, which I find to be kind of strange. Um, I knew when I was buying this lens that it was a, ja a Japanese or Chinese knockoff of a lens, and I expected it, fully expected it to be a completely piece of crap lens. Um, I would, the only reason I bought it was because the lowest aperture 50 millimeter lens I own is the Canon 2.8 aperture and it does amazingly with giving me that background blur but I just don't have $1,300 or I guess there's a cheaper version that's around $600 of the Canon uh, 1.2 aperture and I've heard that that is one of the best portrait lenses on the market hands down between that and the 85 millimeter 1.8 those are supposed to be the two best lenses um, for for portrait photography as you can get those really blurry backgrounds out of focus with the bokeh because if you're new to photography um, you're just now learning or you have just recently learned that the lower the number on your aperture it's kind of backwards and it's actually the wider the aperture goes and the wider the aperture goes the more light it lets into the camera which creates a very um, unique look it's called a depth uh, a, a shallow depth of field and it creates background blur behind your subject and kind of separates your subject from that image in a whole so um, to get an aperture on a lens Usually, from what I've seen, the lower the aperture number, the more expensive the lens can be. And so when I'm online looking for different lenses, I came across this lens. And again, I'm saying it's generic as is, and this is the box that it came in. It doesn't even, um, it just says 50 millimeter lens. This particular lens is for the EF mount for my uh, Canon cameras. And because I have an adapter, I can actually also take it from my T8i and throw it onto my EOS R if I'd like to as well. Um, but they do have an M42 mount available, an MD mount available, a Nikon mount, which I believe is the Z mount, and then they have a PK mount available. So if your camera fits one of those mounts or the EF mount, um, this will work for your camera. It, it says on the box 50 millimeter um, and then there's some Chinese writing in there below it and I had looked it up on my Google Translate on my phone 
and it just says standard lens and it kept switching between standard and prime lens like i'm not sure if the translator didn't quite know what to do or or what but you know so it was switching in the google translate menu from prime lens to standard lens and back and forth uh, but that's all the information i got on it and then on the barcode itself it says made in china and it says 070 camera so i'm assuming that that is the brand name um now when i typed in the in the google search i will be leaving a description to the link uh, a link in the description below so if you want to buy this lens you can find it fairly easy just go to my description and you'll see the link um i knew like i said i knew it was going to be trash i only bought it to see how good that bokeh was. I wanted to see, and at the price of $47 for the lens, that's cheaper than the 50 millimeter Young Nuo lens that I bought when I first started with film and photos. So, um, yeah, I figured wh what's the worst that could happen? It's gonna be garbage for 40 bucks, I'll just return it. So I got it, and when I got the case, I opened it up, it was this cheap little box. I opened it up, and it was nestled in a piece of plastic clamshell plastic that's what it came in and it was wrapped in a plastic baggie um first impressions of this lens now i'm going to show this to you now um it is a fully manual lens there is no autofocus to this lens which i'm assuming is another reason that it is so cheap and it also did something very strange to my camera i've never used an older style lens like this before um, first off, it's all metal, very solid construction. The glass is even, I think, triple coated. It's a very good looking lens. Let me see if I can get this on camera. It's a very good looking, high quality feeling lens, which blew my mind. I did not expect that. And so I pulled it out and I was like, there's gotta be a catch. There's gotta be something wrong with this lens. Um, maybe the mount's wrong, something like that. And so I'm gonna demonstrate here. The one issue that I've had with this lens is, this is my T8i and this is my 24 millimeter Canon lens. I'm gonna take this off real quick. Um, the one issue, I might wanna open the other lens first. Uh, the, the one issue I did find was, it was kind of strange putting the camera lens on the camera initially. So I take this lens off, you line up the little dots. This one has a red dot on the metal mount bracket. And I just couldn't get it to rotate and turn until I flipped the camera upside down. And then I noticed it kind of fell in place and I was able to click it on and click it into place. No problems at all. So um, I don't know if it's just the weight of the lens is pushing it. It's hard to hold it or what. But you, I had personally, I had to turn the camera on its back and then click it into place. Um, so the strange thing that I noticed about the lens is that when I initially turned the camera on, um, I had thrown it into portrait mode to take a portrait and I had expected that it was going to be a manual focus lens because that was in the description. You know, I, I didn't expect it to be able to focus without me having to turn the ring. Um, and, and the one thing I didn't notice though, or didn't know about it is that it's an, it's actually a, manual aperture adjusting lens as well so when you look at your information like say i want to adjust the iso or the frame rate it actually puts double zeros i don't know here let me see if i can get this in camera it actually puts double zeros down at the bottom if you can see that when you go to adjust your aperture where you should have the aperture setting where you can normally access it with the back spin dial on the camera um, with this lens it's just set at double zero all the time so you can adjust your shutter speed definitely and you can adjust your iso definitely through this lens but to adjust the aperture it's just like a focus ring your aperture ring is on the actual lens and um, this lens goes all the way like i said to a 1.7 aperture which is it's, it's amazingly wide open that's that's better than the canon lens that i had um that i had paid i think more than twice as much for and so if that's not something that's going to bother you if it's not going to bother you to manually focus your your 
subject into frame and then manually adjust your aperture. It's which to me, it's just the turn of a dial on the front of the camera instead of the turn of the dial on the back of the camera. It's on the lens instead. Um, and especially if your camera has focus peaking like the T8 does, I know the M50 does as well. Um, you can get the ad adapter mount for the EF mount for the EOS M50 and then just throw this lens on that mount. I, I have that mount. That's how I use all my EF lenses on my M50 as well. Um, if that doesn't bother you, this is the best hands down budget lens that I've found for portrait photography. Hands down, hands down, cheapest and best quality. Um, again, it's solid, like aluminum, I'm assuming. Um, it's lightweight, but it's, for, for its size, it's heavy. But it, it's not as heavy as some lenses I've held. It's not anywhere near as heavy as my 24 to 105 that I'm filming with now on the EOS R. Um, it's just a very, very well-built lens. And again, for $47, that it blew my mind. And especially with that wide open aperture. So I'm going to go ahead right now and I'm going to throw on screen a couple images. See this first image. This image is my wife with the new lens, the 0, 0.0 brand name lens. That is the, um, like I said, only brand name I could find. But if you notice, this is a fully open aperture in this photo. And so you can see the background blur there and see how, how creamy it looks and, and how sharp she is in the frame. Um, now, it might be hard to get focus with this lens if you're not that good at pulling focus manually, but it's just, it gives you something else to practice and with practice comes perfection, so why not do it? Um, and then, okay, for the second photo, I'm gonna put up the 50 millimeter Canon 2.8 lens that I have. And this is what that looks like. And I mean, it has good bokeh. You can see that it's a good portrait lens. I, I, I like it a lot. I have used it for almost a year now. But if you can tell the difference, let me put both of them up side by side. There's a difference there. You can tell that this one's a little bit creamier. This one's just a little bit pulled forward and the subject is more separated from the background. And so for that, um, I, I can't find anything. I haven't personally found anything on the market that is that good a quality for that cheap of a price. So um, I'm actually gonna start looking into more of their lenses. And if this company has lenses that are just manual focus, manual aperture lenses, I think I'm gonna invest a lot of money in some of these because especially seeing the quality, um, I can't find anything wrong with it, you know? And, and I feel like it's, it's a great product. So I'm gonna give it like a 10 out of 10 stars. Um, and I, I didn't notice any chromatic aberration with it when I had it fully wide open, which is an issue that I get a lot with my 85 millimeter lens. Um, so not having any chromatic aberration and still being able to have that aperture open all the way to 1.7 is a very awesome thing. And I'm very pleased with it. So I'm definitely gonna be using this um, for portraits from now on. And I will, uh, I guess, post another video if I have any negative experiences with the lens in the future. I've only had it for a couple days, so I haven't really had a chance to really use it in the field yet. And I wouldn't suggest this lens for, um, film making unless you had a follow focus but if you have a follow focus um it it would even be great for filmmaking too so that's just my little review that's it for today guys uh, i just wanted to say thank you again for watching uh thanks for watching all the way to the end i hope you guys have a great day stay safe and above all else stay creative my friends we need more of that in this world have a great night guys